So I'm Mitch Mortvet, Assistant Director with the Iowa Division of Criminal Investigation. Yeah. Chief, oh, I'm sorry, I'm Chief Ken Burke with the Winterset Police Department. And Sergeant Jason Hines, West Des Moines Police. And I'm sorry, can you have your first and last name? Ken, A-E-N Burke, B-U-R-K. Great, so uh, can you guys just walk us through what happened this morning? Earlier this morning, uh, the West Des Moines Police Department initiated a traffic stop that turned into a pursuit. Um, eventually, it left the metro area, the West Des Moines metro area, came down Interstate 35 and across on Highway 92. When Winterset Police Department and a couple different counties also joined in, um, traffic intervention took place with spikes strips over by, behind us here, by the Lutheran Church. Um, that's where the subject was, his car came to arrest, bailed out of the car and ran into the Winterset Lutheran Church. Um, the church was unoccupied at the time, and uh, and that's where he remained for several hours. As more law enforcement came to the area, um, he was refusing to come out, but was in contact with law enforcement through state, Iowa State Patrol negotiators, and ultimately surrendered peacefully and was taken into custody. Uh, he, the individual is identified as Gage Walter from the Omaha, Nebraska area. He will be facing Iowa charges, a number of felony eluding and uh, those types of traffic violations as well as possession of a stolen vehicle. And we are also working on additional Iowa charges here for probably burglary um, to the uh, Lutheran Church. Yeah, how long did this last for? I know you guys were over there for a minute. We got here at 9.30-ish, what were you guys? Sergeant, do you know when it started? This this particular incident, our officers located the vehicle in West Des Moines at approximately 7.45 in the morning. And shortly after that, the pursuit ensued and made its way here to Winterset. So uh, best rough estimate would be roughly about 8.30 is maybe when he entered the church and that, that portion of the incident began. So it lasted about four hours okay. on scene yeah. here at the church. Um, what went well today? Because we had a good outcome. We did. One that he surrendered peacefully, obviously. Um, so there was nothing, you know, other than negotiation and law enforcement presence. But it was absolutely a combined team effort by law enforcement from all over the area. Um, between obviously West Des Moines, Winterset, Iowa State Patrol, the DCI Division of Criminal Investigation. I know uh, Madison County Sheriff's Office was here, Adair County Sheriff's Office was here, I believe Dallas County Sheriff's Office was here. I mean, so a great team group effort by local law enforcement here to, to get this to surrender peacefully. And how challenging can it be with a scene that encompasses multiple counties, multiple areas to get this under control? It, it, it is tough and, and as it leaves one jurisdiction, of course that jurisdiction usually stays with, but then also other jurisdictions are, are joining in. Um, you know, between radio contact and communication. Uh, you know, it, it can be difficult. It's gotten a lot better, I will say, in the last few years as far as radio contact between law enforcement agencies. Uh, and I, I really give hats off to uh, the negotiating team. Uh, and it was a team, uh, the state patrol team, uh, and I believe uh, West Des Moines negotiators uh, did a great job and brought a peaceful end to this. Um, they, uh, they can't be uh, uh, praised enough on that. Next to Chief, your team has had a year. You've all had a year. We have. We have. We have. How are they doing? Good. Good. Our community is very strong. Uh, we've got a lot of support in our community, uh, and uh, I've been receiving uh, phone calls and text messages all morning, uh, letting uh, people letting us know that they're thinking of us. So uh, we're just uh, very happy for all the cooperation and everyone that came together uh, and made this uh, have a peaceful solution. And you know, how was it for you as chief hearing about the situation happening and realizing that? You know, this is all coming into your borders. Uh, yeah, we were a little, uh, a little concerned, I guess. Uh, luckily, uh, our officer was able to uh, utilize spike strips and, and end the chase. And my understanding was that uh, several times very high speed, very dangerous. So uh, he was able to get those strips out uh, and get the chase come to an end. Uh, so we're uh, we're grateful that that uh, concluded, and then uh, again that we had a peaceful solution to it. Yeah, how much of a breath of relief was it for the negotiators to you know, follow through and make sure he was able to give himself up? It was a, a great relief, uh, especially when we heard the negotiators say that he was coming out. That was, uh, that was a, a very stressful time for everyone, and it, it was a great relief to hear it. So. Um, we, I was going to say, we got a tip that this person is wanted for a homicide in um, Omaha. Do you guys know anything about that? 
we with him being an omaha resident we've been in contact with the omaha police department um, i don't want to we can't comment on any investigation that they have ongoing but we have been in contact with them um, and we, they are in route over here so we will just all of our agencies will work in cooperation with them and anything that they may need since since they will be here in iowa uh west des moines to winter tech seems like an awfully long route for a chase can you talk, talk to us about that i mean obviously you're trained for this but that has to be difficult yes it is difficult anytime especially when it leaves our jurisdiction having to coordinate that with other agencies and other counties that we're entering. Sometimes that chase happens faster than that communication can, so and especially when we have high speeds like that, that is something that is difficult, and we do con we're very concerned about public safety when, when things happen like that. Um, but we do the best we can. Things have improved, technology's improved over the last few years, so it does make it a lot easier. We have a great working relationship with both of these agencies and all the other agencies around this area, so that coordination and that communication is very important to, to make sure that we can get to where we need to be and help each other out. And just so I'm clear, there was nobody else inside this church, or were there people in the church? Correct. Nobody. It's, nobody was inside the church. Okay. Uh, so, thank goodness that yeah, that services hadn't started yet or anything. Um, the church was, um, yeah, was vacant at the time that that about 8:30 when. I hate to ask, but do you know what time services were going to start at that church today? Or I don't belong to that one. I don't, no, I don't. Look that up online. Yes. <laughs> I belong to another one in town. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, this is a small town, and we saw a lot of people talking on social media. You know, they were very scared, and you know, we keep thinking every time we hear something like this, it can't happen here. You know, what, what's the message to people about protecting their own personal safety and the communities they love? You know, I, I mean, in today's society, as we know, you know, everybody needs to be vigilant. And when I say vigilant, I mean aware. Be aware of your surroundings, you know, um, and, and just use good common sense. You do think it's never going to happen in your small town, especially in smaller communities. However, we are seeing across the nation, not just in Iowa, but across the nation, that things like this do happen. Um, it, it, yeah, other than that, I guess the message is, is just always know your surroundings, you know, and um, take care of those around you. Yeah, and we ask people just if you see something strange, say something. The, the, the old adage of see something, say something. So uh, that's important. Uh, and I, I believe our citizens are real well uh, versed in that. So, You know, and, and I just feel that the entire situation was very fortunate. One, because it, the pursuit did last 45 minutes. There was a lot of law enforcement involved with it. So when he did get into the church, there was already a fairly heavy law enforcement presence that could at least encompass and set up a perimeter around so that the rest of the so that he wouldn't be able to leave the church to get further into the community um, so we we're very fortunate about that as well how many officers would you say surrounded the church by the time that this pursuit came to a head so initially yeah well initially and then maybe going forward well, yeah. yeah initially there were uh, right from the start a minimum of six maybe eight yeah uh, and then it grew substantially after that and very quickly yeah, yeah. very quickly yeah, you scene. know we had tactical teams from the iowa state patrol from west des moines um and the surrounding suburbs of of the west des moines area that that encompass a a tactical unit as well so we had multiple tactical teams on site that if this would have been prolonged you know we would have been able to rotate people out with the heat and, and the current conditions so um there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, resources there, but it ended successfully, which is what we wanted, and yeah. peacefully. It seemed like they rushed right in when it was ready to go. Yes. All right, I'm good on, on oh, information. Okay. Anything else you want to say? Well, I, I, I want to thank the uh, outside agencies that came in to assist. Uh, I saw cars from every Metro uh, Police Department, Ankeny, uh, CERT team from uh, the Metro area, State Patrols, TAC team, uh, they all came in uh, and did a great job and the cooperation between all the uh, agencies was uh, uh, heartwarming to see. It was excellent, so. Thank you all for well, your time. You. Thank you. Appreciate it. You bet.